Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sandy Glaze. I'm a personal transformation and self-development coach, and I specialize in the spiritual and emotional energies. And many of us have come to the conclusion we realize we're in a spiritual war. And as we watch the insanity unfold in the next weeks, months, years, I don't know how long it's going to take. I thought it might be an idea to touch base and just try to um, remind people what it's all about. So what I wanted to speak about today is the virtues of God. Now, these titles that I'm going to talk about are not my information. I can't remember if I saw this online or where I saw this, but I want to go through an outline. I think there's seven of them that I had seen. And I wanted to go through an outline what they mean, because so many people talk about God or creator or source, but they can't put definitions to it. So that's what I wanted to do is put some definitions to this. So I didn't even understand what some of these meant. So I'm not trying to pretend that I, I know more than other people, but it was really important when I started to read the definitions that it's going to help us going forward because there's a lot of shenanigans, a lot of corruption, a lot of abuse. And it doesn't, it's not just the people at the top who do it. It's right across the board. And I think it's really important that we start to realize the people who are getting it right and who's not getting it right because people who are standing up for, for the good are getting attacked but who's doing all the attacking? And what about the people who aren't speaking up at all? Why are they not speaking up? What's their true motive? So the first one that I read was altruism. And I'd ask somebody what altruism meant because I didn't understand the meaning of it. And what it basically means is wanting to help others. And what I thought was so interesting about this wanting to help others is because those are the people who get targeted, taken advantage of. They get, um, um, people assume because they're, they're, they wanna help others that, that somehow they're weak. We all have a fiduciary responsibility, a duty to, to help others in our certain, whether it's a train field. We also have the wanting the best interest for other people. And we also are part of a circle of care. What's a circle of care? When I was finance, uh, with financial planning, I had a situation happen where a woman, she kept making appointments and then she wouldn't show up or she canceled them. So I just stopped calling her. Well, she shows up in my office one day. You can tell she's, she's not clean. She's um, got sores. There's just something, something is really wrong. And she started telling me that her husband, ex-husband was trying to get her. So I'm listening to this and I know what it means to be gaslit and I'm listening and I'm trying to see if it makes sense or not. And she couldn't understand what her net worth was. So technically I have to squeal on her and find out what I can do to make sure that she gets help. Well, I called the local mental health facility, Grand River. Uh, they wouldn't help me. And she, was, the woman was actually smug. We can't tell you that privacy, privacy. And I'm like, I'm not asking you to talk about her. I'm saying, what's my, what is, what is my responsibility here? And no one knew. I called different women's shelters. I called all kinds of places. And you know what it finally came down to? A young man who helped boys and, and girls who were sexually abused. He said, Sandy, you're part of a circle of care. All you have to do is be able to say, Your Honor, this is why I did what I did. And, and you're, you're there. And I thought, why doesn't anybody in the system know that? Why, why did it have to be so difficult to find out how to help somebody and use my own fiduciary responsibility? So these, this is part of the journey that got me started on this way back when. But it's really important that we understand that it is our responsibility to help others and to help the little ones and help the ones who are vulnerable. And the, our society is so backward right now in the West. We've lost our way. It's more, the more you put the boost to somebody and screw somebody over, it seems the more people admire you. And this is what is about to change. I I'm, I'm feel very strongly about it. But again, coming back to the virtues of God, what are those virtues that we are supposed to be aspiring to? Because I'm starting to notice uh, the games are getting even bigger, uh, especially on social media. And I'm starting to notice that these people know what they're doing is wrong, but they don't care. So what are we going to do about that? So. The second one is known as right action. So I looked these up just to make sure I was getting the right um, interpretation of these definitions. And I put this down as knowing where your rights and, and uh, your rights start and stop and vice versa for the person you're interacting with. Um, uh, knowing right from wrong and staying true to your principles and your values. So often people will do anything to get ahead. And I, I am specifically speaking to the women right now because so many women have lost their way. And they're the ones playing the games even worse than the men and not not in all cases but i'm that's what i'm seeing happening um it's a lot of the women who have lost their way and we're not waiting anymore we're not waiting for women to get their shit together we're not waiting for women to speak up you look at women like um laura logan who's another one liz proken uh, mary flynn they're starting to speak up now it doesn't mean i agree with everything they say but they're start, starting to speak up about the trafficking and they're getting attacked for it but where are the women standing up to help the other women where are the women standing up to help the children and um so that so this is where a lot of where i'm going with today 
but knowing when what your values and your principles are, could you even explain your values or your principles? What do you what do you believe in? And what's happened because of the education system, so many women have become so masculine in the West, they're more masculine than the men and the men don't know what to do. And the women are actually thinking they're better than the men because that's what the education system has trained them on. But they want that because they want daddy government to be your daddy. They do not want you to have a loving relationship with a partner where you have a successful loving relationship, family, you know, whether it's your finance, whatever it is, that's what they don't want you to have. And when we start to realize who the true enemy is and what, what their motive is, maybe we can start to turn this around. The third one was chastity. And I looked that one up and it says refrain from um, like extramarital affairs. So I just re I wrote refrain from messing around on your partner. And why that is so significant. Do you remember uh, Ashley Madison? We have to start asking why they want everybody to be sexually offside, promiscuous, promoting these drag queen story hours, all this stuff. But I was thinking about that website, Ashley Madison, where they're promoting people to go and have extramarital affairs. If you don't want to be married, don't be married. But what ends up happening for the partner who's not fooling around, that results in betrayal in their heart. And what are we being attacked with right now? Our hearts are being attacked with certain procedures. They're being attacked with betrayals, abuse. Um, people that we think are, are decent people, we're finding out they're not. These are all areas that attract attack the heart. Why is that so significant? And I know I use this chart a lot, but when you look at love, love is halfway up the chart from zero to a thousand. We need to have positive emotions to get into our higher knowing and our extrasensory perceptions. That's where we bring the magic in. They don't want us having loving relationships. They don't want us uh, having parents and uh, children trust their parents. So they want to put the school in place. These are all things that are designed to destroy the very structure of the family and the heart of humanity. So, so what I put down was priests, teachers, coaches, families break that when you sexualize or sexually abuse the children. Why do you think governments and educators are obsessed with sex? Why do you think media is obsessed with sex? Because that energy is so powerful. They want you wasting it. They want you to spend it where it doesn't matter so they can siphon your own energy off. And I'm getting tired of the so-called experts not being able to explain this. If it wasn't um, such powerful energy, they wouldn't encourage you to waste it let alone um, why, what, why they're, what they're promoting is illegal as well. So I'm going to talk about that in another video. Humility is having a modest view of one's importance. I really struggled with that one because uh, I find a lot of people have low self-esteem, but they have low self-esteem because they don't want you thinking you're significant. So they do the actual, the opposite and double down and try to make you feel that if you, if you say something good about yourself, that you're being arrogant or you're being narcissistic, that may or may not be true. But when you know how to give yourself compliments and give yourself love and give yourself the attention you need and know how to read your, the difference between your needs and your wants, it's not about humility. It's about being a mature adult and knowing, knowing how to read your energy and what your needs are. So I had a real, like I said, I struggled with the humility part. And the other part of that is people can shame you. Oh, don't you think you're so smart or whatever to knock you down to elevate their self-esteem? So there's going to be a lot of things that we look at that we start to question. And we're going to start looking. And I've said this before. There's white hats, there's black hats, and there's ass hats. I'm, I'm preaching to the ass hats today. We're starting to see who they are, who don't care about anybody but themselves, because this is what we're, we're um, standing up against right now. The next principle, which is what? One, two, three, four, five is love. So I'm going to ask, what is love? Matt Walsh, um, he did a documentary, What is a Woman? And it was pretty funny to watch because most women can't even define what it means to be a woman. And um, I, I think what's going to start happening is we're going to start putting terms and definitions and words to so many things that we think we just know intuitively and we don't anymore because we've been encouraged to forget what that means. So I thought it was pretty funny that women couldn't answer. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. What is the purpose of love? How do you define the different forms of love? So our society, as messed up as it is, thinks equates love and sex. That's the only way. But there isn't just those. There's love of your family, love of your friends, love of your pets, love of your community, self-love, love of God, love of your romantic partner. But only one of those should, should include sex. But most people can't even define what the different feeling of love is in their body when, they, when they're experiencing it, love of nature. There's so many things, but we, we've been taught to not really go in and touch base and understand what these mean. How do, you show, how do you show love? How do you show love to yourself? How do you express what your needs and wants are in a loving way? 
So, and I've already said this, um, we're not waiting for the world to wake up. And I know there's a lot of talk about changes that need to happen and we're waiting for the world to wake up. I, I'm not of that opinion. I think some people are so far gone that they don't have contact with their souls anymore. And a lot of that is that procedure that they had. And, and Rudolf Steiner said that in 1918, in a hundred years time, they were gonna have a procedure that separates the soul from the body. That bus has already left, you know, there, that train's left the station already. Some of these people are not coming back. And I think it's important that we start to look and focus on the ones who do want to make the changes and be there and help them. Happiness for others. I've seen this happen so many times. Um, and, and you can watch if something good happens to somebody and they're telling somebody about it, you see that they're uncomfortable because greed, envy, and jealousy is the way of the modern woman. And I was working with a young woman recently who, who started dating somebody and she's falling in love and you can see it. And she's telling her best friend about it. And her best friend doesn't want anything to do with it. And she can't understand why. She goes, my best friend is married and has two children. Is she not happy for herself? And the answer is, doesn't matter. Probably not. But she's not happy for you because there's some people, some women are so fucking shallow that they have to make sure that you don't get ahead of them. But th th that game is only playing in their head. I also have a, another um, a friend, a dear friend. She, she won an award in her company and it was 20 her, her company's been in business 20 years and she won an award and as she's explaining it to people at a different function she could tell which ones were not happy for her and what it really did for her is she's deciding and setting boundaries don't make somebody a priority who only views you as an option if they can't be happy for you it had nothing to do with her businesses it wasn't even their their industry but if they can't be happy for you why are you giving them the time of day so um and we can see this in the modern women because money is the big horror of the day they're taught to be like men more so like men than um ever and they're taught to get ahead and compete when that's when competition isn't called for how do you feel when somebody other than you receives something good in their life whether it's romance career home wealth whatever it is how do you feel about it because we're starting to see which ones aren't happy for us and we're, we're just cutting them loose we're just not wasting time on them anymore and we all have a choice whether we go to the light or the darkness. And I think this is what the big divide is that we're going to see. We're going to see who genuinely is capable of love and being connected through the virtues of God and who is not. And none of us really care. It's each individual's choice. But we're starting to see uh, more and more of just how many shallow people are on this planet. Temperance is the quality of moderation and self-control in thought, action, and feeling. Not being excessive, avoiding extremes. And I also put on that not controlling others because we're seeing so many people who need to control the narrative, control the conversation, control the information, control what other people think, control what other people should do. And it is getting to the point that we're just tired of it. You worry about you, you let other people worry about them. And I'm not saying this to be preachy or give any kind of a speech today. I'm just saying this that I think people need a hand to try to redefine what, what their virtues are, what their values are, what, what's important to them, what their principles are. So, um, and then that led me to um, integrity and morality. Why this is so important. We have to, when you decide who's, who doesn't have something in your best interest, how do, you, how do you make that discernment? What is it? Is it something they're trying to get you to do? Something they want you to think? Something they want you to feel? Usually those are the signs when somebody's trying to manage what you're doing. That's the that's the control that you're starting to see when they have to dictate your behavior, your thoughts, your emotions, um, um, what your morality is going to be. When, whenever somebody's trying to dictate that and what are women really good at right now, in my opinion, NLP. So if you say something over and over again, somebody's going to believe you. And we've seen whatever her name was, McKenna, say this in a bar one night that um, you tell people this enough, they're going to believe it sooner or later. We know Kathleen Wynne was trained in NLP. So the politicians are trained in NLP because they know if they keep pushing information on you that you're going to believe it. These people have no morals, no integrity. So I know I've talked about this before, the Toronto Protocol. This was 1967. They're trying to get people to make decisions that aren't in their best interest. So all of this is about where we are right now, trying to maybe reduce the number of people who are um, consuming oxygen on the planet is one way of looking at that. So um, this is just, I'm just gonna read a few excerpts. Today we have to make, uh, to make so that this spirit is translated by a world society of the leisure in all its forms. The leisure has to consist of sex, of the drugs, of sports, and travel and exoticism, leisure activities in general, but accessible to all sectors of society. So this is what they want you to do. And what this is designed to do is take out your uh, modesty, 
and your morality. So they want you to be focused on things. We all know the sports are all rigged. We all know that. We understand that um, the drugs, depending on what that's doing, altering your consciousness, but it's not helping you alter your states of reality or go into the higher dimensions. We know the, we know the problems with sex, the indiscriminate sex, because more, why, why is human trafficking for sex so high? Why are so many people not having loving, connecting relationships? Why is people looking for that that fix at 15 minutes or 20 minutes or however much time they get, but not connecting with their wives? So this is the ladies, because I'm under the impression a lot of these women, they're not having sexual intimate relationships with their husbands. Are they in it just for the money? If you are, that's okay. That's up to you. But we're starting to ask, why is there such a need for sex? And I don't think it's just a few people who are, who are um, using those services. I think there's a lot of people using those services. But why is that happening? After having experienced without limitation the liberation of the morals, the evolution of morality, in other words, the wandering of the spirit, they experienced the economic crisis and then the war. So they planned this for generations. In principle, we know the exception proves the general rule that is contrary to it. But in our vocabulary, it is the exception that should be imposed to all. We make we need to make sure that the exception in different spheres of society is being new rules applicable to, in all conditions, a primary objective of all the future social protests carried out by nation's youth. So what are we what are we teaching right now? Drag queen story hour. Some of these bitches, they shouldn't have their children. Who would go and want to see their child go up and watch a naked man dance? And if you think that all these genders are blending, get the job, get sterile, stop having children. Like it's, like it's to the point, it is beyond absurd. And what happens when people go to protest it? The police come in and arrest the people who are protesting the illegal activity of sexualizing your children. So again, I'm really taking a, a run at the women, but I think we have the opportunity to make some, some of the big changes. The men need women who have their shit together, and we're not seeing that in, in our society. That exception will become the fuse by which all the historical society will collapse on itself in shortness of breath and on unprecedented confusion. And it's the women who are insisting that we do this their way. It's the females who are in the education system. It is the females who are in the medical system, the nurses who are insisting on giving this procedure. We have a lot of problems here, but it's the women who are the easy, easiest to manipulate. And that's where I'm hoping that we can start to find our way and get back on, uh, on track here. So for this um, new order, we have first to remove the family. What will uh, entail at the same moment, the disappearance of the ancestral religious teachings? I don't think that's a bad idea. And in a second place level, um, all the individuals by removing social classes in particular, will look at all the borders and all the immigration that we're bringing in and they're getting more benefits than the people who've actually lived in whatever host country. Middle, uh, so they're trying to get rid of the middle class, but we have to proceed in such a way that all these changes appear as arising from the popular will, that they have the appearance, appearance of democracy. Um, <clears throat> so having um, all the appearances of the modernity as an office of child protection protected by a charter of rights and freedoms. Offices for the protection of children, among which officials of young intellectuals without experience, freshly out of universities, um, are highlighted for our internationalist principles. They will comply literally without proper judgment, the charter of rights of the child. Who will dare to oppose this without being identified at the same time with barbarians of the Middle Ages? So basically, they're, they're manipulating pretty much everybody. And a lot of that happens in the schools. And I know I'm, I'm going off because I've talked about this so many times, but at some point, when do we wake up and realize that we love ourselves enough not to be manipulated? So this is this is what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> so this one is just something I came up with about morality. May we all rise to the occasion and leave behind the world of old and its lack of morals, ethics, dishonesty, lack of integrity, unconscious habitual patterns of manipulative behavior, narcissism, secret societies of control. Step into our ascended role of higher divine responsibility, grace, harmony, balance, peace, unity, abundance, love, and wholeness. A lot of people say these words, but they can't define them. They don't understand how they play out in our world. Morality and decency are human attributes that are sourced in the heart, not the brain. It is a strong moral foundation that builds a solid spiritual house. Um, enjoy worldly pleasures responsibly. Operate with impeccable moral character and no longer accept anything less than that from yourself. So they want, they want to talk us into, I'm going to use the word polluting ourselves. So they're doing it with morality, with all the push on the sex. And like I said, if it wasn't important, they wouldn't want you wasting it or trying to steal it from the children. Um, they, they do it with this um, 
uh, intellectually because they give us nothing but garbage information and they don't tell us the truth about being human and, and what, what it means to live on our planet. They do it physically with poisoning of the water and the quality of the food that they feed us. They waste our minds with mindless entertainment that's not real, but but they know it's real for them because they know how to program it. Do we love ourselves enough to stop buying into all their nonsense? Go inside and get in touch with the best part of you, the one that wants you to be a good person. Respect yourself and others. Be compassionate and considerate when appropriate. And it's not always appropriate. I'm not, I'm not of that mind. Uh, if we turn to others to define our beliefs and expectations, we end up adopting the morality of the ones we turn to, whether we are aware of it or not. And we've seen the number of politicians who are trying to uh, uh, steer a narrative. Um, it doesn't matter what it's about, if it's about our wellness, if it's about finance, if it's about protecting the children. Like, you know, these doctors should be, I, I think they should be tried and hung for mutilating these children. Like at some point we have to ask if these people are getting off on this. Why are there no studies about the subject matter of what it makes a person decent, kind, or moral? Why is this not part of the education being taught to young people? And I'm not putting this on the young people. It's across the board when it comes to age. A great divide, the bifurcation between good and evil is unfolding before our eyes. And only we can decide for ourselves what side we want to be on. Uh, we don't need to learn how to play the game. We need to learn how the game was played to control and manipulate the entire society. So I wanted just to touch base on this because um, we're going to need it in the next little while. And uh, they're coming out full force on social media. So I saw a meme today. Now, it doesn't mean these people created this. It says Donald Trump is supporting um, a homosexual convention at Mar-a-Lago. And people are buying it lying hook and sinker. He's not the one promoting the pedophilia. He's not the one promoting the homosexuality. That's the Biden doing that. But how many people are going to turn this around and say Trump's doing it? And we're going to watch the people who are standing behind it because in this divide, the abusers need um, the minions to do their dirty work. And this is where it's going to come out next, I think, is we're going to start to see how they turn everything that's bad on the people who are trying to do good. And they're going to try to take credit for the good that other people came up with. And this is just a sign of a sick society. And ladies, again, I, there's so many of you out here, especially the ones in the three letter agencies. I watch the games you play and you play them without any, any um, really regret or any, there's no, there's no emotion in you. And for ones that are parents, you're not capable of love. If you can do this to other people, you're capable of doing it to your children. And I've seen some of you do it. So it's not that I, I'm not speaking from actually observing some of these people doing this. But if we're going to have a society that, that's more loving, compassionate, balanced, focused, I think it's really time that we start to look at what the particular behaviors are. So I hope you enjoyed the virtues of God, um, um, whatever, wherever I got that information. I can't remember where I got it, but the definitions of it. But that's what we're supposed to be aspiring to, to be our higher selves. And I think we, most of us have a have a dentist if we choose. So hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. And if you can share this video with other people and let's get more people thinking about what it is for them. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm just putting this out as these are the definitions that I looked up. And uh, I just think we can all be better at what we're, what we're here to do. So hope you enjoyed this. Have yourself a great day. Today is December 21st, 2022. And I don't have to tell you where the state of the world is right now. So we understand why this is so timely. Take good care. Merry Christmas. Have great holidays. Bye-bye.